TLO, what's poppin'? We are on Twitch. We are live. But by the time you see this, we won't be. So just leave a like, comment, subscribe, turn on your post notification bells. Let's continue. We grow the family from Chicago to the UK, man. Right behind me, you see it. Little warning screen. You never know, man. Some things get spicier than others. Uh, on the bottom, you see that username. Twitch.com is where you enter that at to follow on Twitch to see be a part of the live streams. Don't forget, we also got Patreon.com. We post five to ten videos a day a week, and it's that many because we added what well, we add to it. Premier League highlights, simple as that, man. This is Police Interceptors, though. You get me. <laughs> I don't know what season. Just talk to me. Copyright disclaimer under Section 107 of the Copyright Act 1976, allowance is made for fair use for purposes such as criticism, comment, news reporting, teaching, scholarship, and research. Fair use is a use permitted by copyright statute that might otherwise be infringing. Nonprofit, educational or personal use tips the balance in favor of fair use. No copyright infringement intended. All rights belong to their respective owners. True. Uh, let's get into it. I have to search through this to make sure. It's like 12 episodes on there. I wanted to make sure that I didn't see this one. I think I didn't see this one. I'll have to run up and stand here because it was free. The interceptors sometimes work solo. Are we doing all right? Get on the floor! And other times as part of a wider team. The value of so much. The, the ability of the individual officer can be great on the ground. But if you throw another officer in there, or if you throw a helicopter in, or a dog, um, you know, our capability just increases and increases. It is a team effort that's, that results in people getting apprehended. And people... I could tell he made some bad choices as a teenager. Look at this. Who, get, what, who gets this? If you got it, listen. To each day on. But you are in the forest now. You're supposed to have a sleeve, buddy. Get you a sleeve to look cool. Cooler than, you know, as cool as possible. Getting apprehended. And tonight, they're going to be drawing on all their resources. It's 10 p.m. and the interceptors are on the tail of a black Peugeot that's failed to stop. So this is how I like for police interceptors to start with a good old fashioned United Kingdom car chase. You know what I mean? The driver is known to police and wanted for an alleged robbery offense. Yeah, I was just crossing the lights for some red. But more worryingly, the man has phoned the police and threatened to harm the woman who's also in the car. Okay, wait a minute now. The, hot, the stakes are real high. I ain't never seen this type of energy. It's right, right, right. On some dark road. The interceptors are keeping their distance so as not to agitate the clearly dangerous man. Racing to catch up is John Stockeld, who, along with the police control center, is coordinating the operation. Uh. And the vehicle has been at low speed, driving around but just failing to stop. The occupant of the car has then contacted police and said, I know the police are behind me, but I'm not stopping. A female's in the car, uh, he's threatened harm against her, and we've been standing off, and the, the other two ARVs are behind it now. That's a crazy route to take to try to escape the police. Because you've been driving in the, car, in the car with this person, I don't know, for however long, and if you really... Like, are gonna hurt, con like, God forbid that you actually are gonna follow through with your threat. But if you just saying that to back, get, get the police off you, it's not gonna work. Whenever they get you stopped, they are gonna charge you for kidnapping. With the ARVs or armed Stupid. response vehicles now behind, it's time to try and bring the car to a stop. And some other stuff. Somebody want to go through the seat and um, get a stinger out? The police lie in wait with a stinger to puncture the suspect's tyres at the roundabout up ahead. He's about 400 metres from here, speed 70. 
However, the suspect takes evasive action. Yeah, subject there is wrong side of the roundabout to avoid the stinger. He's uh, continued straight on. But there's no getting away from the eyes in the sky. Yeah, buddy, you're done. The chopper out and that thing, it's over. Three overhead and recording. Visual. With the police helicopter scrambled to monitor the situation from above. Approaching the roundabout Hamilton Hill Road, standby by Jeff. The pursuing police cars are able to drop further back. Yes, yes, uh, we're we'll getting a bit more serious. Yes, yes, Charlie. But the suspect has phoned the police again, and there's some disturbing news. Control to all units, just be aware um, we have been informed that there's uh, possibly a machete in the vehicle. He is stating that uh, he's taking his uh, guard, the girlfriend, or wife hostage uh, with his machete, so just be aware, please. Did you get that? He's made him fetch to kill uh, the female in the vehicle and himself. Uh, yes, yes, thanks very much. The female's in the background shouting, he's got a knife to my neck, over. The incident has turned into... Give me a second here. I'm processing everything. I feel like when situations like this come up, bro, there has to be some type of mental health going on. There's a mental health crisis that we that that has been skipped over, that has been neglected. Cause ain't no way a a female, uh, or or like being in a relationship with a female, ain't no way as a male it, that anything that can happen is gonna get me here to here. I'm, I'm guessing this is like a, a issue between like like a spouse, a boyfriend and girlfriend, right? Ain't no way. I will leave. There are f set, there are millions of fish in the sea. To a full blown kidnapping situation. Command to armed units. Authority is granted in 2220 hours. Watching strategies to protect the public and preserve life. With this the imminent so threat to the woman's life, the interceptors urgently need to stop the car and try to secure her release. Happy for you to attempt to sting over. They attempt to sting the vehicle for a second time, and it's a direct hit. Yeah, I've still got black vehicle if that was the one. Can we confirm it has been stung so I can get the vehicle closer? It does look like the vehicle has been stung. It's time for the armed response vehicles to move in and take control. Armed response, they're going to need a bit, a bit more. This is a hostage situation. They're going to need some type of negotiator, ain't they? They're going to need a little bit, you know what I'm saying? They're going to have to need, they're going to need a little bit of finesse and delicacy with this. What they be saying on the online right now, they be, they're going to need a little decorum. can see it's going to come to a natural stop at some point and prefer that than um, just fall something. With the Stinger doing its job, the car is running on borrowed time. It's down to five miles an hour and it will tell you it's gone. And time for all of John's experience to come into play. We trade in hostage negotiation. It's all about making sure that the female is safe. My job when I get there to work out a plan a plan that we're going to work towards, a plan if it all starts to go horribly wrong, um, and try and cover every eventuality. With the car finally stopped, will John's worst fears be realised? Doubtful. The female's in the background shouting, he's got a knife to my neck over. Wait a minute, this is real life. Okay. The interceptors have been in pursuit of a black Peugeot that failed to stop. So uh, continued straight on. The driver has kidnapped a woman who was in the car and made threats to kill. Did you get that? He's made threats to kill uh, the female in the vehicle and himself. Managed to sting the vehicle. Yeah, I've still got black vehicle if that was the one. And it's come to a stop, but the woman is in grave danger. Females in the background champion's going I'm not even gonna lie, this is more intense than I have even anticipated. I thought he was capping about this. 
See, and I'm the person that always say, like, you got to believe people when they say stuff. I should have known better. I should have believed, buddy. Especially when he called in and told them, like, hey, you, hey, you better chill. I got her and it's on me. Chill. I've dealt with him before. And it, Samurai Sword, he was swinging it at us. Samurai it's a tense Sword. standoff. One wrong move could lead to disaster. situation at the moment is, is the vehicle's contained, the dog's here, the helicopter's here, that's lethal, I think it negotiators are speaking to him now. He's confirmed on the phone. While negotiators try to talk the man into giving himself up, interceptor John Stockeld takes control on the ground. We want somebody in there, just, just in case she gets up and goes, do you know what, I'm off. They're preparing for a long wait in freezing conditions. But the negotiator on the phone has a breakthrough. Okay. Just come this way. Boys are a seven female is out of the vehicle. Oh, good. Got no injuries. Um, she's obviously upset. She just got out smoking a cigarette with a, with a, what is that, coffee? With a can, what is this? Got no injuries, um, she's obviously upset. Okay. With the woman released, unharmed, attention turns back to the man. Yeah, from 414, looks like the meal has a bleach and he's smoking. There's no way Buddy's not going to jail for more than three years. For less than three years. He's getting a minimum three. Holding the plate up to his own throat. But the negotiators once again do their job, and an hour and a half after the incident began, he exits the car. 407, it looks like he's wanting to come out of the vehicle. Slowly. Uh, his hands. Hands are both empty. Uh, we have an arrest plan. The driver. Only thing that can save him from getting that much time is if there's no machete. Driver appears unarmed. Driver's side door is open. However, the armed officers aren't taking any chances. This suspect has threatened violence against the police before. You all right, son? Yeah? You all right? Get your side out. But he gives himself up quietly. Is this a rookie cop right here? Like, like I feel like something just went wrong that could have been catastrophic. All right, hold on, because I know y'all ain't Pete. Look at this cop right here. He's going to go up, drop his gun before he grabs this man. And the gun is just swinging. Look at the gun. He didn't even grab him yet. You all right, son? Yeah? You all right? Get your side out. You think Lisa would have ever done that? Lisa would never have done this. But he gives himself up quietly. I hope they go back and watch film and be like, oh, man, you shouldn't have dropped their weapon before you got to him all the way. And grab the hold, and you know what I'm saying. Confirmed, detained. How are you, fella? How are we feeling? Weakened. All right, you all right? Four zero seven. Uh, just put on the log. Uh, Mills being cautioned and arrested by PC fifty three courts for kidnap and fail to stop. The incident has involved three armed response vehicles, two traffic units. I'm glad somebody commented this. There's a cop behind him aiming at him so he had knew he had no chance. Listen, the police are not going to put one of their own in the line of fire. Buddy was really close. They're not going to take that shot. It could have been real bogus. It could have got real negative. One dog unit, a police helicopter, and six response officers. Ended with Imagine if he would have grabbed him, grabbed the firearm. They would have had to back up again. They're not going to start guns a blazing when the officer is right there. There's officers on both sides, so you miss friendly fire, possibly. With no casualties and a successful arrest. I'm absolutely over the moon. I'm really pleased with it. it it's worked out how, how we would have wanted to. It's what we trained for. The eye in the sky, assisted with the pursuit, 
we were allowed to drop back, not forcing him into making any errors or putting any undue pressure on him, because really we're treating him as as an unstable person. Um, he, he's obviously under a lot of stress, and we're trying not to back him in a corner and make rash decisions. And then once he starts thinking rationally, then he starts thinking, perhaps this isn't the best option to either cause her harm or, or, or an attempt on his own life. The suspect was convicted of dangerous driving, driving whilst disqualified, no insurance and possession of a knife. No kidnapping charge? No hostile, no nothing? He received 22 months behind bars and was banned from driving for a further 36 months upon release. No further action was taken on the suspected robbery and the kidnap case was not pursued. Salute. I mean, shout out to the UK judicial system, man. But damn, that's crazy. He, he got two years, but like, he probably what do what? Eight months? Empire 3 to you. Confirm we're uh, to stand down. Yeah, 3 2. Thank you very much. Um, great efforts and uh, really good allies on throughout. Thank you. Sometimes the interceptors go in all That's guns crazy. blazing. On police! 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 Other times they're behind you without you even knowing. Using subterfuge or an element of surprise, we think actually reduces the risk of, of the activities that we, that we carry out. If we can do things proactively before the bad guys and the criminals know what we're doing, that's got to be the best way. What we don't want in, in any circumstances to, is to provoke a reaction, be that a car chase, be that a firearm standoff, be that even just a fight. Allegedly. In the if we can do things first on the front foot, then that's always going to be the best way. It's late morning. And interceptors Spike and Pete Spud Tate are in one of the unmarked BMWs, keeping their... I always wonder, like, salute to everybody with the name Spike. This is not a knock on you. I like the name. It's aggressive. Um, and I, I would imagine you are a terrible child. You were bad as hell. But I always wondered, like, what, would the, what was a parent thinking when they gave their son the name Spike? Like, what was, what was the thought process? You looked at him like, man, I'm for the name, bro, Spike. Come here, boy. Like, you, Nick, you gave your, uh, yo. You, that's your son. Not your puppy. Eyes peeled for a suspected drug dealer. Salute, though. Spike is an advanced driver, and his favorite patrol car even has a... <laughs> he looked like a Spike, though. You know what? Exclude his parents. They, they got it right. That's crazy. Nickname and a Twitter account, but it's currently in the garage. Black Beauty's pool poorly today. Something's happened to it yesterday. Um, so we're out in our number two, Silver Shadow. We can still use the cheekiness of this car and certainly pull up without anyone hopefully knowing that we're the police. Mm -hmm. Black Beauty is so well known, even though it's discreet, it might be seen more than this one. So fingers crossed we can use the stealthiness uh, of what we're in to give us that tactical advantage. Mm -hmm. well, I was in Delray Beach in Florida and I seen the police, three of them, hop out in a Nissan Altima. No, what was it? Yeah, it was a Nissan Altima. Beat up <laughs> with, with police lights in it. I seen the lights, and they hopped out. I was like, what the f I was, oh my god, yeah. If I would've did something illegal in front of them, they would've got me. Because I would've never guessed. <laughs> Spud is a veteran cop, and lists his hidden talent as being able to remain hidden, which will come in handy for their surprise visit this morning. We've received information that um, a vehicle um, around our area may be um, dealing drugs from it. Occupant um, or occupants inside might be dealing heroin. It's a product that absolutely ruins your life. I think where it affects everybody, someone who's massively addicted to heroin, someone who will do anything to get it, 
they're the ones who'll break into your house, pinch your telly off the wall, and they'll turn that telly into a tenner. That's all they're interested in. Where they're getting the next tenner from, you know, to get that next deal, isn't it? I'm not going to lie, that's everybody on heroin. They are all like that. It's these dealers who, if, if we take out that supply, they're going to get it from somewhere else. Spike. Not going to lie, the war on drugs is, y'all fighting a valiant fight, but it's a losing fight, 100%. Fantastic. The drug dealer has been spotted by another unit. It's time to intercept. Travelling time, about well, two minutes. Dealers will often try to discard drugs if they see the interceptors coming. So Spike is in stealth mode. Right, let's just go nice and cool now. I'm not going to scrape the tyres. in there, look, no? Pollard's in front, yeah? Yes. They arrive on scene and spot the suspect in the blue car. Hands! Hands! Over the door now! No. Over the door! No. Chill out, mate. Jump out of the car. Damn, Spike. Spike was ready to break the window. He was just about to open it. Door now! No. Over the door! No. Chill out, mate. Jump out of the car. Right, mate, you're detained for the purpose. With a name like Spike, I expect you to be able to break that window first try. Have a drug search, all right? right. Somebody give your hands to see them. All right, give your hands where they are. Put these cuffs on you, all right? Do you yeah, understand? Yeah, no worries. And you... Open your hand, open your hand, open your hand. Yeah. Although Spike's baton smash no, wasn't no, exactly no. smashing. Ah... <laughs> <laughs> uh. I think the producers was gonna get a get on Spike for this. Yeah, yeah, you can't let you gotta get them for this. You can't let this ride. The man was caught completely unawares. Right, just come out the car slowly, slowly. All right. Just this a dealer or a user? Slowly, just stand there. Got him. Right, you're detained for the purposes of a drug search. You understand that? Information suggests you might have something on that you shouldn't have. So we're gonna search you under Section 23 of the Misuse of Drugs Act, both you and the vehicle. Do you understand that? All right, before we start the search, have you got anything on you? No. Nothing at all that's no. going to harm you or me. No. I'm going to search, and if yeah, there's anything, yeah, no I'm going to worries, find worries, it. No worries, no worries. All right. The suspect initially denies having any drugs, but soon changes nah, his tune yeah. under Spike's probing questions. Is there anything in your car that you shouldn't have? Yes. What is there? Uh, you'll probably find us. Well, we will. Just tell us what the, you're not going to go anywhere. Just tell us what the is. Yeah. You're not going to go anywhere except jail. Drugs. What kind of drugs are in your car? Heroin. Right. Whereabouts is the heroin? It's, um, it might be in my pocket. Be right, slowly. We're, I'm going to I'm going to put gloves on. We're not going to be moving around quickly or nothing. We're going to make no sudden movements. Okay. I didn't like you making sudden movements for your car keys, which is why we were going to put your window through. I wasn't going to press the button to open the door. Okay. Yeah. Right. If you want to tell me which pocket it's in, just to save time. Spike, you don't got to explain to us. I know what that was. It was an explanation of why, but you should have just left, left, you should have just left it alone. Top right. This top right jogging hand pocket. Right. The info. Because now we know you had a purpose to break the window and still couldn't. On the man seems to be spot on. There's a yellow kinder egg in there. <laughs> Right, I'm going to open slowly. Kinder eggs are often used by dealers to stash their drugs, as they can easily be concealed in clothes or sometimes even inside their body. Right. Yeah, it's over. Right, there's a brown it's substance over. in there. Do you want to tell me what that is? It's over. It's, it's individualed up. That's distribution. Heroin, yeah. Right. At this time, right, the time's now 13, 15 hours. You're arrested on suspicion of possession of a class A drug, namely heroin. You don't have to say anything. Me harm your defence if you do not mention when questioned something will chill later on in court. And you do see me with good evidence. Do you understand that? Yeah, I knew it was... But he's out of gone. He's gone for seven years. 100, 100%. Are Kinder... They are? Kinder eggs are banned in America? Just that. It's a significant haul. I don't think that's true. The interceptors. The bag contains heroin with a street value of almost £1,000. Yes, possession with intent to supply. Because of the quantity, it's quite a lot there. Yeah, All right, as it opposed... is light, but... Right, well, it's quite a lot. It's quite a lot more than we normally get for um, possession. The man claims personal use, but with this amount of heroin, they clearly suspect he's a dealer. You got any other mobile phones on you? No, just that one. 
Right. When you take it, do you smoke it or do you inject yeah, it? Smoke it. It looks like a user. No. Any residue out like that? No. Hasn't been used. Right. What's in this wallet before I open this? For money. Right. Are you working it up? No. Alright. So where do you get when how long have you had this money? Boy, stop answering the questions. They got the dog off you. That's it. Stop talking. Get a lawyer. Uh, me last here. How's it? What do you do? I'm on uh, job seekers. Right. The weight of evidence against the suspect is starting to stack up. We're going to be putting a drugs dog in your car. Is there anything else in your car? Set a jig there. Set a what? Scales. And it seems this isn't the gent's first brush with the boys in blue. Stupid. Brother just said it was for personal use, then just gave up um, scales. So why you got that there? You talking too much. Are you on our systems at all, if anything? I've never, met, I've never met you before. Yeah. What for? Um, supply. Supplying what? But it, it was supply, but it wasn't. It never is. I know that and as Pete calls in a drug dog, Spike turns his attention to the suspect's seemingly unbreakable window. You've got a candy strong window in this life. Spike, brother. Stop. Would you stop? Now the window's strong. It don't even got no tint on it. Good wind is that. Took a button strike. Did I? Are they reinforced? Yes, Spike may not have taken the windows out. Just put your hands down by your lap there. Oh, your muscles just not strong enough. <laughs> but he's taken out something far more important. No one in the world is that personal. No one can use a full kinder egg of heroin just for themselves. We've took a drug dealer out today. And he was right as the man was convicted of possession with intent to supply a Class A drug. He was ordered to pay a £170 victim surcharge and receive 37 months behind bars. 37. Three years? It's not bad. As for Spike's baton work, he received some critique from Spud. I saw Spike in. A big, strong lad like you, armed with a baton. V course. I'm going to have to go to the gym. Yeah. <laughs> you might need to change your name too, because any other spike in the world would have broke that. It's tough. It's the late shift, and Damien Damo Stevens is on patrol in Darlington when a job comes in over the radio. You know, I seen somebody else doing police interceptor, interceptor reactions. Salute. <laughs> These two guys in here are apparently wanted for an assault that's just come in. These are two named suspects we've left in this car. I don't feel like we've done this in a long time. Can we get a... Uh, how many likes can we get on this video, man? Two, two, no, let's go. It's, it's police interceptors. Like, should easily be getting 300 likes, shouldn't it? Let's get 300 likes on this, man. Salute to y'all. Appreciate it. Damo's been a cop for 23 years and his hidden talents include speaking French. But it won't be Damo who's pardoning his French tonight. Hey, how are you doing? Are you okay that side, mate, yeah? Damo arrives on scene with a local officer. What's this character's name? What's your, what's your name? Interceptors! <laughs> Can I get them out my car? Please? Yeah, I would want them out my car if I was you, like. As the local officer deals with one of the suspects, Hey, look, hey, how are you doing? 30 minutes. Damo turns his attention to the other lad. Get out of the car! No, man, no. No. Well, we're getting arrested for life. Shut up! Suspicion of assault, you hands. I beg your pardon? I said, what? I said on suspicion of assault. It's only suspicion an old Damo wants is to... Is that a can of Guinness? ...have a chat. What do you mean, in suspicion of assault? Well, well, it's a suspicion of assault no. you're struggling with. On suspicion of assault. What do you mean, suspicion of assault? Just block me out. Right? Suspicion. Of what do you mean, suspicion? Calm down. Hey, hey! Calm down, you're making a fool of yourself. Just calm down. Well, no. Whoa, whoa, whoa watch out. What are you doing? I'm not doing anything. I'm, I'm you you move, should, then. You should be thanking me. I'm holding you up. But with a thank you not forthcoming, Damo gets down to business. Oh, was that Strongbow? Yes. He's been named as a suspect for an assault. Well, you, you can ring my mum now. Well, well how's your mum going to know if you've assaulted someone? The alibi. Look, I'm just. 
come out my house. That's why. Well, how do you know when the assault happened? Well, come on then, when did it happen? Well, I'm going to uh, find that out. Yeah, find, find that out, out and you'll be saying sorry. I won't be. Yeah, buddy, definitely off. Off the strong bow and booger sugar, ain't he? Yeah, you will. No, no, I won't. You will, like, because I've just come out my house. Right. Do you mean right? Right, right what? Right. Well, you're under arrest. Under arrest for what? How many times do you need to tell him? Suspicion of assault. I'm going to find out on who. I'm going to find out who's the allegation. How oh, the f can I get an assault when these two have just picked me up? Hey, hey, Branks and Finest. However, Branksome's finest is still struggling with the meaning of suspicion. Does he have teeth in his mouth or no? He's arresting me on what? As I assault. Said. Assault. My name's been given to what? Come on. As I said. Assault to what? As I said. Well, come on then. Assault to what? As I said. Assault to what? As I said. Right, go on. I, I don't think he... Do he got teeth? As I said, on suspicion. Yeah, suspicion. I'm not, suspicion. Saying you, I'm not saying you've done it. I'm saying that someone is alleging that you've done it. Right. But the lad's adamant he's done nothing wrong. But he says, the spithin. <laughs> ah, I got tears. Ooh. What do you sound like, Elmer Fudd? What is, what is... Look, the can there, what's on the... Fucker and Spuckatash. That's just crazy right there. I've just got that out of my dad's fridge. Right. Yeah, I've got in the back of the car. He's a folders out of Branksome. Uh -huh, so we pulled it back into Branksome. He got in the bottom row, yeah. Right. Assault. Yeah. Right. It seems Branksome's finest finally gets it, and it's time for some time out. Right. Can I have a sit in my car and get one? Oh, then. Right. Yeah, you smash. No. Give us a, give us a minute. Right, right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna go on out a limb here. There's probably something in the car because she's trying to get out of there quickly. She should just be quiet. Honestly, I've just come out my house and go and ask my mom and dad right. now. Whoop, whoop, whoop. Smoke the CP Chavi. Oh, okay. He do got all his teeth. He just got a little gap. It's just a little extra bit of air coming through there. Okay. Get us in then. You're being very childish. Yeah, I know. Cause it's ridiculous. You should be ashamed of the way you come. You should be ashamed. With the lad practicing his new dance routine, Damo speaks to the driver. You've got some strange friends, haven't you? I know. Have you had a drink tonight? No, I'm not. No, honestly, I'm nothing at all. But Damo spots the lad on his mobile. No, you're not going on my phone. You're not going on my phone. I'm ringing my mum. I'm ringing, ringing my mum. Yeah. I don't want you I'm ringing my mum. With any possible I'm ringing my mum. I don't want you in No, obviously not. Any... What are you doing? I'm getting you I'm phone. Mum. <laughs> you're not. I am. It seems the lad has something yeah. on his mind as he tries to open the window with his head. And he's not finished yet. Lively, isn't he? What I don't him doing is interfering with victims or witnesses. That's why I've taken the phone off him. That's why it all got a bit larry. The last thing I want is for him to start threatening people who he may have assaulted. And interfering with me justice, really. You're free to go. I'll get the can off your roof. With the driver off... Good night, see you later. Branksome's finest has finally worked out how to open the window and has some important information to share with the world. Raj Packy! Wait, they didn't lock the windows? Raj Packy? Yeah, Raj Packy. And the man is still protesting his innocence. What, what have we been arrested for? Goodness me. I'm this is a great advertisement for Strongbow Dark Fruit. Because if it'll get you like this, then you know what I'm saying? It's getting the job done. Which language would you prefer? Whilst Damo could try and use his French, his look says it all. Goodness me. Yeah, goodness me. And the man was innocent after all, just as he claimed. The case wasn't continued and he was cleared of all charges. The other passenger was still a waste of the night though. Also released without charge. Look at Buddy face. Buddy got the He is gone. Done for. Still to come. Ah. The day in an interceptor's work is rarely the same. From surprising stops to jobs spiraling out of control. Delma! Delma! 
back off. The interceptors know to prepare for the unexpected. No, no, no! It's the late shift, and Lee Wilson is out on patrol. This firearms officer's favourite film is The Fast and Furious. And a I like the series too, man. No matter what it spiraled and became, I still like Fast and Furious. Land Rover gunning it along Stockton's suburban streets has drawn his attention. Good job, mate. You've just gone a bit quick, man. Hello there, you all right? Have you been out for a drink tonight? No, I've just been in the gun club. Yeah. We've got a shop right. in the back there. It's all covered up and everything. Right, OK. The man informs Lee that he's in possession of a shotgun. So where have you just been to? Yeah, Spennymoor Gun Club. Spennymoor Gun Club. Right. Where's your firearm? It's in the back. Lee checks the gent is authorised to carry the weapon. Yeah, it's shown, it's, it's shown on PNC that you've got a firearm certificate. I'm just going to check their serial numbers on. How do I get... When I come to the UK, how do I get that certificate? I want that certificate. Your firearm? Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? Must be your pride and joy, is it? Yeah, it is. I'm yeah. a sporter. I'm yeah. a sporter as well. Everything seems in order. Champion, appreciate your patience and stuff. Right. Gun case closed. Lee's next job is literally just around the corner. All right, thanks okay, very much. Five right, years. Yeah. All right. See you later. There you go. LZLZ from Tango, 422 from Park. Charlie, 56 Zulu, November Hotel. That was stupid. The Black Astra. An Astra thrashes it past and goes lights out, most likely to try and avoid his registration being clocked. Black Astra. Too late. Astra just uh, made off in the estate. The pursuit is on. Don't know where it's gone. It's gone out the estate though, so it could have went right. Could have went there, uh, left towards Grey Road. I'm going to go towards Grey's Road. The nippy Black Astra is already well out of sight. Lee has to draw on all his 15 years of experience to second guess its getaway route. Attention. Possibly just been stolen. Um, no idea where it went. I'm just going with the. Uh, with a sixth sense at the moment, areas where I think it might make off towards. The fleeing car has had a significant head start, but this advanced driver has a nose for the chase and some serious horsepower at his feet. As you can see there, as far as uh, the job is concerned, you do them one thing and then somebody decides to do something else in front of you and the lead you on. I forgot what car they said he was in, but it was slow. It's, I think it was slow. When it rolled past, it was making a lot of noise, but it didn't go nowhere. It gone now, though. Two minutes into the hunt for the Black Astra, and there's still no sign of it. I'm going to go over towards um, the Primrose Hill area, just have a look around there. Going with really a gut instinct at the moment. Hark. And it looks like Lee's gut is about to deliver. I believe I'm behind the, uh, the vehicle. Uh, stand by. Like a wrong and seeking missile, incredibly, Lee has honed in on the suspect. Yeah, behind the vehicle. But the drive insane. driver of this Astra hot hatch is in no mood to pull over for a chat. Kilo Charlie, five, six. Stand by, speed is seven, zero. The pursuit is becoming dangerous. Stand by as the getaway car floors it through narrow residential streets. He's running parallel with Durham Road, so he's big. And if he turns next left, he's going towards hospital. Stand by. The getaway driver is now hitting 80 miles per hour in a 30 mile per hour zone with speed bumps. He's approaching a red ATS. The shots on these cars are And dead. it's only going to get bumpier. So, mate, to left, left, left. The grass. This is very pointless. Road conditions are light, uh, moderate. Speed is 7 0. The suspect's driving is becoming even more reckless. 
offside in the road. He's taking astronomical risks in order <coughs> to escape. It's going to be a left, left, left. Rose at funeral services. Speed, seven to go. Although Lee still has him in his sights. A left, left, left. The speedy getaway driver seems to have an encyclopedic knowledge of the local roads. Right, 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 out of Dunstan Road. But has he finally made a wrong turn? In two. Claxton Close, dead end. Claxton Close, dead end. Is it? Or is it enough for him to get through somewhere? Nope. It yep. seems like the driver also has encyclopedic knowledge off the road. I mean, it's a right, right, yeah, this right, is his neighbourhood. He yeah, knows what's houses. going on. The smaller Astra squeezes through a tight gap up ahead, but it's trickier for Lee's larger car. Left, left, left at the uh, the end. He's going that way round about. <laughs> and those few car. seconds delay Got has away. proved costly. At the roundabout, temporary loss. Lee once wow. again tries to relocate the Astra. Bro got lost, found, and lost again. He's gonna come back towards. But this time his search for this slippery customer is in vain. <sighs> They've lost him pretty much just Dang. there inside this junction. He knew the area like the back of his hand, even getting through. Um, yeah, this is his home. The car. If he ain't got no garage, you well, could probably find him. There you go, that was a bit of sport, wasn't it? You know, he, he, he's got away this time, but, and let's be honest, if, if it, it is a good result, because nobody's, nobody's got hurt, nobody's got seriously injured, nobody's been hurt. So, um, you know, sometimes we get the bad guys, sometimes we don't get the bad guys. The Astra was pursued again the following week by another unit. Is that a captain? It was eventually abandoned and recovered by the police. The driver is still on the run. My dude is elusive, ain't he? Criminals come in all shapes and sizes. And it seems ages. There you go. How old are you? Uh, uh, <laughs> you so From the old to the young. Good boy. Get off the bike. What are they doing? And the interceptors are increasingly dealing with kids. Like. More interested in turning to crime than turning on their Xboxes. <laughs> It's a bit of a surprise and a disappointment that so many young people are getting involved in criminality. But I think there isn't a lot of influence on these young people from all the people who they maybe look up to, who are, you know, like gangster wannabes or something. But um, I guess a lot of the, the, the lack of discipline often comes from um, the, the home life or the, the, their own social setting, the peers, who they um, aspire to be like, and there's just no boundary setting. It's the middle of the afternoon in Middlesbrough, and CCTV has spotted a 14-year-old who's wanted for not attending court. They doing all that? They've alerted the police and various units, including Liam Sewell, who are on their way to try to arrest the lad. He's um, wanted on. Uh, you can't even miss court in peace out here. CCTV getting you. Um, warrant for a criminal damage offence. He's actually entered an address. Um, so we're just going to stand nearby in the hope that he comes out the address so we get enough units and we can put some containment on. And then um, we'll try and jump on him and grab him, get him locked up. Liam's been a copper for 15 years and prior to joining the force worked at Butlins. He spent his time entertaining families, but the kid today won't be so pleased to see him. The lad we're looking for, he's a um, low-level criminal. He is known to us. I've come across him a few times during the course of my duty. Nothing too exciting, but um, it'd be just nice to get him off the streets. Lad who's wanted, you know. He's, he's 14. He's around not turning up. It's only a minor criminal damage that he's wanted for, but he's still wanted, so. I get it. I mean, you talking like he a 34-year-old man. Like he did not, he like he did. He's 14. We'll do what we can to get him locked up. How about you get him some the help he needs? The front of the house, so we're just going to see in it round and get him grabbed. Oh, 
The team swoop and quickly gets the lad in cuffs. They've seen the suspect trying to hide something in his joggers and give him a search, which quickly bears fruit. And it's not the lad's chocolate fix they found. Oh, look at that. Shockingly, it's a bag of suspected crack cocaine. You got any more? No, I haven't. Well, it's tucked in there, man. 45. It's tucked in. Well, obviously, I've had my hands on my shoulders. Is that just his pocket? And it seems there's something else tucked in the lad's pants. Is it inside? You can feel it, man. I'd be surprised. You can't even get it. Look it. Idiots. Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing? Huh? What are you doing? Cut it. It's a kinder surprise, but it looks like the boys already made the toy. Oh wow. What's it? Nothing. That's how good you are. What could we call you? Yeah. So. It's obviously a cheeky little chap caught a couple of bits of drugs on him and just searching him now, get the rest of the gear out of him. The lad is taken to the van for a further search. Yeah, he's trying to pop to the back of the bar. Yeah, yeah. That's the one. Just gonna put your hands behind your back, all right? Eh? Put your hands behind your back, mate. All right. So you can't fiddle on with stuff. Yeah, sure. Top man. Flex your arms, get her. Definitely gonna have to edit this one. Should I actually have some? Oh, well, I'll take that. Well, what are you playing at? I'm trying to see if you've got anything else on you. Oh, look at that as well. Oh, oh my god. It seems the lad is carrying a lot of pocket money. How much is that? Oh, I'll have to put them under the He's a buzzing because you've found money and crack on me and what? Eh? Well, about to go to young offenders and get out. The lad is claiming the drugs and money are all his. What's this anyway, mate? What what? What's this in your pockets? But drug dealers have a habit of using kids as drug mules. And this mule seems like he's carrying a full load. Oh, a bit of cannabis. This kid should be in class. Oh, that was a pinch of salt. What was it? But instead he's got pockets full of class A and class B drugs. You're like one walking walk pharmacist, aren't you? And there's another disturbing discovery. Oh, that knife there. Eh? Bit of a ninja. Stopping up, please. Uh, yeah. Uh, yeah. Swing it yeah. Watch it, kid. Yeah. The boy was facing accusations of minor criminal damage, but now has a long list of major charges to contend with. Same thing, dynamic fence, if you don't mention questions. Don't say I'm calling if you do something. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, let's go. He's drug dealing, you know, he's dealing in class <coughs> but he's been ex exploited. There's clearly someone else um, up the chain exploiting a young 14-year-old kid who run around the streets dealing drugs. Um, young lad's got a knife on him. I mean, he probably thinks he's a big hard man with that. But if he pulls that out on someone, they're just going to take it off him and use it on him, aren't they? Class A drugs is a, is a serious offence. And then going, again, with the weapon, going equipped with a bladed article, you know, is a significant offence as well. These people yeah. we need to get hold of. And we need to get some intervention in place because he's going to spend the rest of his days in and out of jail. You can see the way he's going. Um, he needs a quick, sharp shock, and hopefully he'll put himself on the straight and narrow. The young man was found guilty of possession right. of a knife, threatening a person with a knife, possession with intent to supply crack cocaine, and possession of a Class B drug. He was sentenced to 12 months at a youth detention centre and given a criminal behaviour order for two years. Coming up. That's the thing about being a youth, man. 12 months, probably get out in five. Then he got to do a, what was that thing called he got? For two years. At a youth detention center and given a criminal behavior order. Criminal behavior order. It's 11 p.m. and interceptors James Jacko Jackson and Simon Kessel are working the late shift. Jacko's preferred shift is the night slot, and there's no one he'd rather spend his evening with than the officer currently in the passenger seat. It's better crack when you're working with someone, to be fair, isn't it? Providing you're working with the right person, um, a 12-hour shift can either can fly by, or sometimes they can uh, they can drag. 
Am I flying by or dragging? <laughs> I'll let you know. <laughs> Simon is an ex-Royal Navy submariner whose favourite day is his day off. Before he takes a break, he and Jacko have been asked to assist with a suspected drug driver. My colleagues got a uh, vehicle stopped. Uh, well, I think they've got concerns about the driver's demeanour. So they're going to ask me to come down and do a roadside drugs wipe on him. The officers have already found some cannabis. Oh, he's had that on him? Wow, look at the size of that stuff. He's going to jail anyway. But the suspect doesn't seem keen on the limelight. <laughs> and his fashion sense is causing Simon some minor issues. How am I supposed to get this into out? <laughs> Will you be able to lift it up when I do it? Just, just go over oh, Just go over oh. the Muslim son. Whilst the man might be concealing his face... Jamie, have you ever done one of these before? No. No. There's no hiding from Simon's drug wipe. What is going on? It's becoming more prevalent that... They're letting catching them do that? ...people driving whilst over the limit for drugs, and mainly due to the fact that we've now got these tests that we can do at the roadside. Um, which, so the numbers have increased massively over the last couple of years, but that's because it's new legislation and we're actually able to do something about it with these tests now. The test will check for cannabis and cocaine. Right. Can you just rub it'll, your... It'll fail. What? It? It'll you just... fail. Right. Why? What have you took? What? What have you took? No, I'm saying it'll fail anyway. I'm not going to lie you. Well, it'll only fail if you've taken something. Yeah, I was just has. asking if you've taken anything. Yeah, I have. What have you taken? We... The man admits to smoking yeah. cannabis. Right, can you rub your tongue around inside your mouth? Get it all nice and wet for us. Pause. No, inside your mouth. Get it all nice and wet inside, yeah? And right, stick your tongue out for us. I'm just going to rub this around. Oh, why? I can't get it in. Bro, if we were listening to this with no audio, I mean, with no visual, like, let's go back for a second. Hold on. No, inside your mouth. Hold on. Hold on, man. I got you. Can I do it? How do I do this? Look, yeah, I can't. Oh, wait. Here we go. Listen up. No. There we go. The man admits to smoking cannabis. Right, can you rub your tongue around inside your mouth? Get it all nice and wet for us. No, inside your mouth. Get it all nice and wet inside, yeah? And right, stick your tongue out for us. I'm just going to rub this around. Oh, why? I can't get it in. See what I'm saying? No context is crazy. You got to pause that, officer. I ain't even going to lie to you. That's crazy. Okay. It'll fail. I know it's going to fail. While they wait for the drug test results, it seems the man wants his top half to be as cosy as his head. Okay. Pardon? Coat. Is there, has it been searched? Is there anything in his coat? He wants to put his coat back on. No, yeah, you can have a coat. Yeah. Just the rest of us. And Jacko now thinks he recognises the suspect. How? Oh. You look like one of the Avengers. <laughs> oh. You look like a non smear <laughs> It seems Jacko is. It's funny because he don't got no facial hair, and when you don't got no facial hair, sometimes you may look like that. Go back. No, this is classic. This is classic. Hey, you have a coat? Yeah. Just the rest of us. And Jacko now thinks he recognizes the suspect. You look like one of the Avengers. <laughs> <laughs> you look like a non smear <laughs> <laughs> It seems Jacko isn't flavor of the night that with this funny. masked Avenger. Hey. I'll talk to you, but I'm going to talk to Well, come here, then. I'm going to show you this. I don't want you to think... Sorry, let's stand now. <laughs> A few minutes after taking the drug swipe, the results are in. Did he fail? So you've taken cannabis, but not cocaine? Yeah. <laughs> Do you ever take cocaine? No. Never, ever? You fail? Hey, can you see that second line there? Yeah. See, there's two lines on the bottom. Yeah. That's next to the cocaine one, not the cannabis. It appears the driver is not only coated up, he could also be coked up. Well, you know that there works, man. Hey? I, I yeah, know. the fact that they even let him keep the mask on is like crazy.
This is never happening. Oh, that works. I got never it. seen it. Kind of a show. Just to be sure, Simon gets a second opinion. Go have a look. Have a look. You know he gonna say it is. You already disrespected him. It's on for cocaine, not cannabis, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the man denies having taken cocaine, but the third opinion will be decisive. They'll take bloods from him in custody, and those bloods will get sent away for testing, and that shows up exactly what is in his system. And this isn't the only test the driver hasn't passed. When they've done the checks on the driver, they've discovered that he's got a revoked provisional driving licence. So he's now driving around without a driving licence, never having passed a test. And he's got no insurance. Um, so another good result. Sees the car off the road, taken off the road for another day. and not be crashing into anybody tonight. If I give this job up, I should open a balaclava shop. I'd be making a fortune round here, wouldn't I? But uh, if I give this job... He had to double down on his joke because it wasn't as funny as the criminal's joke. I should open a balaclava. I can't unsee what I've been told already. Barbershop, I'll be making a fortune round here, wouldn't I? But uh, it's the go-to headwear for the um, for the unlawful driver of County Durham, I would have figured. The man pleaded guilty to possession of a Class B drug, no insurance, driving without a licence, and driving under the influence of cannabis and cocaine. He was disqualified from driving yeah. for three years and was ordered to pay £925 in fines and costs. That was a good episode. Not even gonna lie, start to finish, I was fully entertained. Bro said, you look like an N-O-N-C-E. That is crazy. That's crazy work. And your partner laughed at it. That's, that is funny.